Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. Hey, I know that uh, uh, I've been stuck down in my basement for quite a while. And uh, I think in my last basement update, I said that, uh, you know, I had to move the washer and dryer. And I did that. And uh, so my the old drain line for the washer uh, was an inch and a half. It had about a 30-inch uh, downspout before it hit the P-trap. And probably run, oh, I don't know, maybe three or four feet before it dumped into the three inch line. So the new, um, you know, I figured, well, okay, well, the, it seems to drain fine like that. So uh, having a two before wall, I thought, well, I'll just use an inch and a half uh, um, drain line and it would, um, you know, it'd be easier to, to thread through the studs and, and wouldn't take as much out of the studs. Now it's just a curtain wall. It's not a load bearing wall or anything like that. So I'm not really worried about weakening it or anything like that. Um, so I ran the whole line and I showed that, uh, I think I showed that in my last update video. Well, the problem was, um, my wife would do laundry and the pump would kick on and we have a front load washer and it has a high volume pump on it and it would, it would start draining, but toward the end it would gurgle and right out the riser pipe it would come, right? Like it couldn't take the water fast enough. Now the difference is, um, Instead of having about uh, four foot of run, it's got about 25 feet of run now. So I think the problem is um, you didn't have a big enough uh, drain pipe, you know. And when I looked up code, uh, most code says that uh, with the new high volume uh, washers, they expect um, they expect uh, two inch, or you should use two inch uh, drain line. All right, so uh, here's position man. I've cut out all the inch and a half line, and I have holes, pre-existing holes that I've sawed in, and uh, they're too small for the two inch pipe and I need a bigger um, hole and I, you know, I need to maintain my slope you know uh, for, for drain purposes and of, a, of at least an eighth inch per foot. So the question is how do I uh, keep the alignment of the holes proper and be able to drill them with a larger hole saw and uh, will it work? So I'm going to bring you over here uh, to my makeshift uh, workbench here and I'm going to show you what um, my solution is and then we're going to try it out and see what happens. So I'll bring you over here in just a second. Okay well the first thing I done was uh, I used the two and an eighth inch hole saws, the Linux hole saw, to cut all the holes in the two before studs to pass my um, inch and a half uh, PVC through Schedule 40 PVC. And like I said the new, uh, I'm going to put two inch in uh, and I need a bigger hole so how do you center the larger two and five eighths um, hole saw on that hole. So I got thinking about that a little bit and I thought well I need a, I need a bushing and uh, so I took the I took the uh, two and an eighth um, yeah the two and the eighth inch hole saw and I cut a plug out of a piece of two before and then I, I glued that plug to a uh, piece of one by and I don't know if you could see it there but you can see I put four inch and a quarter brads in there to hold it and that should be dry. Now the idea is that I'm going to pass through this through the existing hole in the uh, stud and clamp it on and then I'm going to use that as my pilot hole for my two inch uh, or two and five eighths inch uh, bit or saw and uh, I should be able to uh, start that hole where it needs to be and we'll see how it works. So let me uh, let me get this thing clamped up and in position and and the camera set up and and we'll do it. So I'll see you there. Okay, so I have it uh, clamped in place on the stud that I want to drill and I've got the uh, uh, the wooden bushing or block uh, centered in that hole and uh, we're going to drill it. Uh, it took a little longer than uh, I anticipated because, well, I, I broke one of my squeeze clamps. I've had these things for about 10 years and that's the first one I broke. I mean, they're all plastic, but uh, I don't know, maybe it was the spinach artichoke dip I ate last night and just don't know my own strength. Anyway, I'm going to get the drill and try to get in position, see if we can saw this and, or, you know, drill, cut it out and see what happens. So, I'll see you in just a second. Okay, hopefully this is a good enough angle. So, I want to see what happens here. Tell if I'm all the way through. Pretty close. 
close. Okay, I think that's it. Let me pop my guide off here. Almost, I'm almost through. So hopefully, let's see if I can pick this back up. All right, there we go. And uh, there's uh, the ring that I cut out. So that looks like that's gonna work pretty good. So anyway, let me uh, come back over to my bench and uh, we'll close out. Okay, uh, hey, by the way, excuse the lighting. I've got temporary lighting strung up. They're uh, LED uh, shop lights, uh, strip lights, you know, so they put out enough light for me to see the work, but probably not real good for videoing. So anyway, that's my tip. Uh, when you have um, a hole that you've made with a hole saw and you need to make it bigger and you wanna to try to keep in the center of it or very close to the center of it, uh, make you a little uh, jig like this. Cut you a plug out of a, a piece of material the same thickness that you're cutting and um, put it on a backer board, clamp your back, black backer board in and and uh, looks like it works pretty good. So anyway, I uh, hope that little tip helps somebody and uh, again as always if you find these videos interesting or helpful or whatever please consider liking, subscribing and sharing. And thank you for your patience and, and all the input. I really appreciate it. Another than that, have a blessed day.